What's up, YouTube? It's Dweebo here, and the time has come. The time that was prophesied. <laughs> late. Many, 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 many really years late. ago. We're really late. <laughs> many, many years ago, it is our Zelda Mega Review. We got the whole crew here. Every Zelda expert I could grab off the street is here. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps a friend or two is in uh, the midst. I don't know. Friend or fro. Friend or fro. I don't know. I don't know where you're going with this. All right, so introducing Jacob. What's going on? Okay, Werewolf. Oh. Oh. Check out his channel, it'll be in the description. He does some YouTube vids. Mm -hmm. um, what's going on? What's going on? Travis, a, a drummer in a band called Icky Romantic. That's my thing. And uh, play Zelda. And then we got. I'm Kenny. Uh, I just play Zelda. I'm not a drummer or anything <laughs> cool like that. I don't have my own YouTube channel. Not a, not a drummer yet or a YouTuber. Yeah. So what are you? If you're not either of those. He's a Mac gamer. I'm a common folk. I <laughs> use Mac. <laughs> uh, so... Have you played Zelda? <laughs> just, just to make sure you have played this, yeah. right? So Maybe. yeah, before going forward, this is spoiler filled. Absolutely, we'll go into everything. Spoilers on everything. Yeah, so do not... On everything. Do not enter. Oh, yeah, we might even spoil the new Alien Covenant. I don't know. <laughs> no, Holy Zelda all the time. So, right off the bat, uh, we all played the Switch version, so you know. Yes. Uh, no Wii U version. Switch boys, no Wii U stuff. How we're going to format this is we'll first talk about the plateau. The very beginning of the game, because I thought that that really kind of molded how you felt about the game as it went on. Mm -hmm. I felt like that was a really strong, like, kind of, you know, point of the game. So, we'll just jump off right off that. I'll just start us off, I guess. Um, the first plateau, first starting the game. So, um, first off, um, you know, kind of talking a little bit about the frame stuff, I think, is, like, right off the bat. Because... That was kind of my biggest worry going into this game was like, you know, I kept seeing frames drop on every mm -hmm. on all on the, the stuff E3 they promotion. Yes. Yeah. Everything they showed the frames drop and it's like, uh, it's kind of spooking, you know, it's kind of spooky a little bit. You were really worried about that. I was really worried about it. So I can, you know, spoiler alert. <laughs> thing it didn't it wasn't as bad <laughs> as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> spoiler um, alert, Zelda looks okay. But I will <laughs> say, man, what a what a terrible first impression, at least, when you first come out of that first um, underground thing. Yeah. Your game starts, you're in like a chamber, right? Yes. Like a like a weird futuristic chamber, and you talk, so the thing talks to you for a second, and you get a little yeah. like, iPad. Yeah. <laughs> and then but, you run out, and it's the whole world. Yeah, and it and, looks awesome, but when you're going down that first path, so it kind of guides you like, it wants you to go down this path to meet the old man and all that stuff. Yes. But when you go down that first path... It just chugs that really? first, that first little area chugs did for not me. Have that I did not have that issue. Really? See, because I, I did. Okay, okay. That's my first frame rate issues came. Off it wasn't terrible, but yeah. it was it was enough to where it's like, uh, is this gonna be the rest of the game? And it, yeah. it's only in that area I had a lot of problems. I had no walking when to the him. game. I do remember when the game first rendered. When I first came out of the Shrine of Resurrection, yeah. and I could see everything. It it took a second. Like it did kind of lag a little bit, but yeah. it wasn't bad. And then after that, it was like. I didn't have any issues until well after I was off yeah. of the plateau. I didn't have issues specific to the plateau. Um, my issues with frames, there's one area we'll mm -hmm. talk about, but the, the when I saw the most chug and like not just frame drops, but like it would just pause. Yeah. Was when I would be fighting, yeah, fighting. larger enemies. Yeah, that's where. And I would like I swing and idea. hit, and it would go and literally yeah. like. That long, it would be. You almost think it's an effect. Yeah, like I almost think it's an effect because you remember the during old... one of the trailers. Yeah. You remember one of the trailers? There was a weird transition. It was the Game Awards trailer. Yeah, and it was like building, like, uh, and it went, <laughs> and yeah. we were like, "What did they mess up the stream?" Yeah. And then we were, we watched the video. They were like, "This is the trailer." Like yeah. it just yeah. like it, so. <laughs> well, I don't the music know went weird. It kind of the music went weird, me. but yeah. So. But so fighting bigger enemies, especially the moblins, those big guys, yeah. Yeah. I had some <clears throat> serious chug issues, but I made it through that. Yeah. I had but I had one... that first, that was kind of really bad for me. That was your first, first impression. First impression, <laughs> but I was like, but once the game went on, I was like, okay, that area is just really bad. That's whatever. But 
of so, all the areas to be bad, though. Yeah, first very one. beginning. So you're set out, and your goal is, I think it was four shrines they want you to, to get. Four or three? It doesn't matter. It was four. You, that old you're, man, you're on a plateau, you're up high, you yeah. can't get down, and there's three or four shrines yeah. you have to get. And it, it, he kind of guides you, because I, I don't know when you find the tower. You find that tower, and that's when they pop up. Yeah. Like, everything starts, like, that's when all the towers go up. And I think that's when they're like, okay, now from up here is when you need to look out and kind of mark yeah, on your map. Your slate and find them. And find them. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. I also I, loved this. It took, I actually got stuck in a part on the plateau, and that was when... So I'm getting these shrines or whatever, and then there's a part when you need to get a shrine up in the cold, like, snowy areas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when I started going up there, it was like, your health is going down. I was like, yeah. crap. I need something that will help me. Um... Now, you went a different path. Real quick, you... I wanted to make a note on the towers before you go past okay. that real fast. I knew right off the bat that this game was for me when, like you said, it opens. You talk to an old man. He tells you to go find this tower. Mm-hmm. And it's like down, and you, you activate, and you go up. I knew it was for me because in most games, open world games, where there's a tower, and like Assassin's Creed does this, you'll go up on top of something, and it will like litter your mini-map yes. with just things. Yeah. What I loved was, you're on the plateau, you're in this tutorial, you go up on the tower, and he says, use your eyes. I want you to look. I yeah. want you to find the shrines. And I did. I started using my scope. I look at, like you said, I looked up, oh, I see one up there in the mountains. Then I looked down below, okay, I see one down by those trees. Mm. So, and what I loved about that is I felt like I was discovering. And that's kind of the whole theme of the game. Discovery. But yeah. that no, I've never played another open world game that treats it specifically like that as far as going up high and looking down to find the things you're trying to find. And that the game made an amazing first impression just yeah. based on that alone. Yeah. And they carved these mountains to where like this sliver would be off so you could see through and you would see the shrine. Yeah. But yeah, so it, it does show it's it's the, cr- the towers do are helpful in the way that they actually show the terrain. Yes. That'll open up from like the blue grid or whatever. Yeah, the, the towers aren't useless for sure, because yeah. like it's just you can't tell what's going on. And it on. gives you a vantage point, but yeah. it's it's still your discovering stuff. Yeah. And even when the terrain you're like, what is up in there? Like yeah. you only get to see whatever. But so um so and he basically like, tells you once you get all the shrines, you can get off the plateau, but you're stranded until you get yeah. it. Yeah, so I, I went up to get that, that shrine up in that snow mountain thing, mm-hmm. and it was like, it started hurting me. Now, my the way I approached it was, I was like, okay, I need to talk to the old man, because he keeps giving me hints. Like oh, It felt like an old NES game at that yeah. point, because I was like, I'm totally <laughs> lost, like how to get up there. And he was just like, there's something you can make, but I need a recipe or whatever. So I was like, okay, I see these fireplaces. I bet I have to learn how to cook. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm placing all that stuff together in my head, and it took me a while to figure out the right recipe, like yeah. learning from his little... Cause so one you point, just mix and match. So I mixed, I basically would save and like mix the stuff, and <laughs> oh if it didn't gosh. work, because yeah. I didn't want to lose those recipes, I would load the game back up. Oh, was my strategy Because I was like, I don't know what exactly <laughs> is going to make that right recipe. Man. So I got the clothes that you need to get up there, and I was like, yes. So that took yeah. me a little, that took me like an hour to yeah. finally... So you made the clothes to get it. Yeah, so Kenny... Really? Yeah, I um, I did. The, that was the last shrine that I did. Yeah, me too. I mm-hmm. walked over to that area right before it got cold, and I saw like off in the distance there was like a little tree house, and it had like a bunch of like uh, baka blooms in it or whatever. So I walked over there, and I beat them up, and there was a torch. So I grabbed the torch, yeah. I lit the torch on fire, and I held the torch with me, and that kept me warm That's enough how I did it. to proceed up. But yeah. you had to like magnesis up that like thing first. There was like a, a big piece of metal yeah. to yeah. make the bridge, yeah. and then you had to like run around because there were some bakaboons up on top of the mountain too. You oh had to like gosh. not fight them. You had that to like was run my past issue. Them I get into the shrine. I had thought I was like there was one way I could get that torch, but yeah, was, I'm gonna have to fight enemies and then I'll lose that fire and then yeah. I'm dead up there. You guys what? don't understand the amount of pain I went through <laughs> in the beginning of this. The control scheme when they tossed you in the game. The controls were kind of wonky. See, I didn't have that issue. It was hard for me to get used to it, I had a hard time. It was hard for me to get used to Yeah, I sat there and looked at it, and I was like, I need to magnesis that steel door on there. So I do that, go pick up the torch, and I start walking, and I want to jump, and I end up hitting the button and putting the torch away. Yep. And then I'm like, oh, I have to go all the way back. Yeah. Like, this is stupid. Yeah, I had issues, too. Up to, like, many hours in the game. I didn't get It was pretty far out. The same because way. you have, like, all those buttons you have to hold. Yep. And up till ve- almost the end of the game, I was selecting the button for, like, swords when I wanted to change to shield. Like, holding down. And I was just like, I you need to struggle. 
I not didn't. Bit, no. Wow. I think they Your did a. Wired for this game. I think they did a very good job with the controls. Oh, like, I, I ended think, up liking it. I think it's the way that they did it was and who very good. Thought the, I, this is my first Nintendo game in a long time, so I, the the only thing that tripped me up was A and B being yes. reverse. Yeah. But I got used to that. But you would think you guys played the yeah. old Nintendo games. Yeah. You played Nintendo more than me, but you guys had trouble with the controls. Yeah. I, I didn't. Yeah, have, I did like it. I ended up liking. I, didn't have I any liked problems. that. I just you know, the, the, feel like there was a lot to memorize. Yeah. And I tried going no HUD. Like, yeah. I know you took. The yeah, HUD. I took the HUD off like yeah. pretty quickly because did I just you liked leave it off? the whole oh, game. Oh, the Wow. I, and I, I, I did not like, use it at it all. It looked good. And here's the thing: the it reason, looks, it looks the good. reason why tank shots I would use it for. No, no, no. The reason why it's fine is because everything that the HUD tells you is also communicated in the game. Like every time it gets too cold that you're going to start freezing, a gust of wind will blow, and you can yeah. tell, uh, or you can see them shivering. And then, yeah, ev- literally everything you could need to yeah. do is you can see it on the screen. Yeah. Um, when you're walking, you can actually tell, like. His he starts doing a certain thing when he's not making any noise and stuff. Like I didn't need the HUD. It, mm. I never felt the need. To I I wish there was a way. I like to like kind of look at the map when that's I make markers I was, and yeah. stuff. Uh-huh. That's why I left it up. Was that's why map. I kept it up. Gotcha. Now that Cause, I'm like, because I would see a shrine and I would like, okay, I can see it on top of the tower. I'd mark it. I'd jump down and I'd know to go in that direction. Yeah. I, see, so I would I mark it with the color and then I would run that way. And if I had any doubt, I would just look down my scope to double check. See with that. Uh, but it. it's it's preference. To yeah. me, I just was so like, I just want this world to be in my vision. I don't want yeah. a mini-map to be in my yeah. vision. But fortunately, the game was designed in a way that I could do that. Uh, I don't want to talk about another game too much, but like I'm playing a Witcher game right now, and I tried turning the mini-map and the HUD off. I, I literally couldn't yeah. because yeah. it's just the world's not crafted. It, cool it, it, excels, it. it excels at different things. I wouldn't do that with every game. But Zelda, the HUD was off, and I didn't need it at all yeah. at so, any um, point. Back on the plateau. So back on the plateau. Yeah. So I got the clothes, got up there, uh, talked to the old man. I was like, oh, guess what? I'm the king. That's spoiler. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Yeah. yeah. I really did. I thought that was cool. And then, um, yeah, then the whole game, it's like, now you can go anywhere. And man, was that... That's always overwhelming in any open world game I play. It's like you can do anything now. Yeah. Because I was like, but what place should I go? I don't. I want to have the best experience. Can we real quick? I do want to know what direction did each one of us go? Oh yeah, which plateau? Immediately at, at the end of the plateau. So that should probably be the end of like when we're talking about yeah. the plateau. Any other thoughts about plateau in general? The first impressions of the game. Yeah, we'll go back to that. I was just saying like that's just overwhelming. Yeah. It opens up from that. Um, yeah, I like, remember the first time I saw Guardian. Uh, on the plateau, and I did yeah. not. I, I did not him. think yeah. that I was supposed to be there. I was like, one, I can't fight this thing. <laughs> I tried killing it, and I kept dying. But uh, I tried running up, like, smacking him, and running behind yeah. the thing. And then I him. didn't even try because I saw it. The whole E three demo was on the plateau, and I saw someone get like wrecked yeah. by that thing <laughs> on the, in the in the tree. I knew they were scary. So I was like, don't even try. But I had right. no idea, and you had to go. You had to sneak around them to get to that shrine, yeah, and yeah. I happened to do it at night, and. There were the um, the Stalfos coming up out of the ground or whatever they yeah, are in yeah. this game. They were coming up and, and attacking me while I was trying to run around these guards. I had the hardest time. And then um, that was the first run I did. The second one I did was the one that was kind of off on the cliff. And I thought it was really cool how they made you like right away. Cut down that tree. Yes. Use it as a bridge. That was awesome. Yeah. That was a like, good, great design. Isn't it actually. interesting though that it's completely wide open. You can go in any direction. But we all did that. Did yeah. you do it the same I, order? Yeah. The Guardian one, then that well, one, then the Snow Yes, one? but I just mean the sense of, like, we all cut down that tree and cross, because you yeah. could get there another way, but it's just interesting. They wanted you to teach you, I felt like, yeah. wait, because I thought the first thing, I was like, if I knock this tree down, that will fall on that. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly that what thing. I thought. Man, I should have used some trees to climb some towers when <laughs> I thought about it. It's, I don't know. That game, for me, when I first loaded it up, I was overwhelmed, because I was like, it didn't initially tell you. Yeah, it gives you that path yeah. down that down there, but it didn't tell you had to. So I didn't take the path at first. I kind of just roamed around, and then I'm like, I can't do anything. Like I don't have any like resources. I'm pushing rocks off a hill trying to kill people, and it's not yeah. So I'm like, so eventually I went back to the beginning. And I went down the path, and I met the old man, and then I got worried because I was like, he's telling me what to do. Is this gonna be the game? Because yeah. I got really, I, I I was really expecting like you said. True open world, do whatever you want type yeah. of game. So when he started telling me what to do, like kind of like kind of like holding my hand, yeah. I was like, I'm gonna have to go through each individual piece of this map, 
and have someone. He thought he'd be like, you yeah. gotta go to this, yeah. and there's gonna be a gate, and here's the yeah. key. And yeah, you gotta... <laughs> and I got really, really but, worried. He ended, it's funny because he ended up being like too discreet on certain things. <laughs> yeah, so like you need to talk a little more, and that's what reminded me of it. He was very hands on. Well, see. I didn't know you got make a recipe for like, clothing. Yeah, I didn't do that. I sat there like, yeah. I, that's what blows my mind. This game was so like we all so different in the way you can complete it, and I just loved it for that. So I mean, for me, the plot that was overwhelming at first, and then underwhelming, and then perfect mix after <laughs> yeah. I got out. I yeah, I felt like it was a perfect it, it, game designers. If you're making a game, if you're like, I want to make a game. Make a tutorial, especially in a 3D space. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. if it's if it's like movement, and you know you don't have to explain, you do this to move and stuff. If it's if it's that kind of a control scheme, make it like this, yeah. where like you the the player you guide them, and you don't have to put like a thing that they read that says here's how you do this. And yeah, this is... putting a box up with yeah. text in it doesn't work anymore. Yeah, yeah. they definitely weren't afraid that you'd be stuck because I got yeah. stuck for a while. Yeah, it's... and I did not look up anything the whole entire game. Like yeah. I didn't. Even... I... No, yeah, there was nothing I looked up. I don't. I didn't I either. Think. Not until after I beat it. Yeah, after I beat, which was like eighty-five hours in. I let my I yeah, I let it. myself become extremely stuck in certain <laughs> yeah. parts, yeah. like <laughs> almost frustratingly, you know, stuck. Yeah. But like that's what I wanted to do was discover and then get that like, yeah. ta da, like moment of like ah uh-huh, or ah uh-huh, moment. But well, the the plateau itself, I I was skeptical. As we're wrapping up the conversation about the plateau, I was skeptical at E three because you could go all over the plateau in E three, and they're like. This is one percent of the game. I was like, I don't believe yeah. you. Yeah, I, was like, I don't so believe you for a yourself. second because look at all this space. <laughs> I was like, I was like, they're gonna add a town over here and they're gonna do this and maybe you know this is half the map or a third of the map. It was one percent of the map, <laughs> like, yeah. and really that's was. maybe a good launching point going into after the plateau. I, I was shocked how you know. It, it's I, well, 1%. I was shocked. One thing about this game is like open world games will usually have a lot of like barren space in certain parts. Yeah. I felt like, man, there was something I was seeing every like, eighty five hours in. Talking about later, but like th- I was still seeing stuff. Yeah. So they Always really new things. I, when you're in that plateau, you feel like, and this is what I felt like when I first left, because there was uh, there was another moment um, I'll talk about where I was walking around where there was rocks and stuff. You guys might have found this too. But I walked on, on this weird-looking rock, and I went up to it and got on top of it. Because uh-huh. I was trying to just discover... Like, I was finding that this game had little tricks up its sleeve. And I was mm-hmm. like, I'm, those rocks look weird. And I go towards it, and here, And that rock guarding comes on, and I was like, yeah. oh my god! Yeah. And you're on top of a boss. Shocked yeah. me. And I was like, I guess I'm fighting a boss now. And I was like, I can't... It's too strong. So I left. Because it, like, killed me in, like, one yeah. hit. And I left, I was like, no. There's a way to take him down. And I figured out, like, okay, that thing up there looks weird. Mm-hmm. What if I, I bomb it, or, or I add bombs or whatever? If I throw the bomb at it, if I climb yep. up, okay, can I climb on it? I can climb on it. Like, it was that yep. discovery, yeah. like, what if I try this? And that's when the game, that's when, that's why the plateau is so important, because it's like, okay, this game does, like, you can really experiment. Yep. And Not really, like, ways. it wants you to experiment, it wants you to cut down this tree and figure out stuff. So when that started happening, and then I ran into a log and saw the freaking first Karak down yeah. there, and when I, once I tried to, like, one of the Karak things is, like, to shoot. I forgot what this one was, but, like, that thing popped out of nowhere when I did this little weird, like, mm-hmm. you know, thing. And I was just like, what the heck? What is this thing? What does yeah. it do? Okay, I wonder if there's more of these things and stuff, but just that it, was so special. It teaches and, you the vocabulary of the game yeah. by you discovering it. But yeah. they place these things so strategically... And they've crafted the imagery of where you're you're naturally going to go down this way, and it was it was it, honestly you could do some like really good writing on just how good of a tutorial yeah. the plateau Stuff is. Stuff fit together. So, Probably the best tutorial I've ever. But played is anyone else? Game. I think that's enough for me for plateau. I think, I think we're good. Good on yeah. plateau. So in that term, that I know you brought up earlier, how do you guys approach the game? Because I know when I started it, my goal in mind was I'm going to beat it. That's all. I I don't I wasn't. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna beat it. You wanted to just do it. You wanted so to I was it. like, let's get into the thick of it. Yeah. So I like I started and I took it like I made it like where the map was kinda drawn out, but it wasn't, and I just like read it like a book. Uh-huh. Which was like right up I went well completely around. So you went east and then you went north, north and wrapped around. Yep. West and then south. Uh-huh. And ironically enough, it worked out for me pretty well because I feel like everything was good timing. Like the, everything that I hit on like, in between the first, like, the second uh, beast and the third beast, uh-huh. 
Uh-huh. I ran into the Lost Woods, obviously. Yeah. And I was able to get... I Well, I didn't have enough hearts, and we'll get into that later. So I had to go grind a little bit, and I was hitting shrines up. I ended up completing 50 shrines by the end of the game, which is lowly compared to you three. <laughs> yeah. Um, but my approach to this game was... I'm gonna beat it. I'm just gonna beat it, and so I just yeah. start. I just went right after the first beast. So you weren't really worried about like discovery stuff. No, I I did the shrines and I did the little venturing, but it just took too much time. <laughs> my, my my approach to this game was, um, I'm probably not never gonna play this game <laughs> again from the very beginning. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my approach was, I want to suck out every bit of juice that's yeah. in this game. Mm. So. I'm not a collectible guy though, so like I'm not like I'm gonna collect every single Korok seed or. Oh my god. But I am the kind of guy that's like where there's real content, like the shrines, um, puzzles, where there's relatively interesting quests, where there's yeah. where there's an interesting structure. I want to do all of that stuff. Yeah. So my approach to the game was I went you know off the plateau. I went the you basically you get a quest as I like, go talk to Empa and then but you can do anything you want. I went that direction, and I went east, and I I just kind of started to do shrines and explore, and I filled out the south, and then I moved southwest, and then I did the north. and, and But and I, stuff, when so. I was talking to you, I was already at the second beast, and you're like, I still haven't talked to Impa yet. <laughs> and I was well, like, are you serious? So well, I, like, I, I did get the game five days after you. That's true. But, like, <laughs> my thing was like... Yeah. But you were beelining. I was yeah. like... For me. You, I were, was... you were very fast. No, I... So, for instance, when after I talked to Impa, and, and so you, you get off the plateau, you go through the Dueling Peaks Mountains, which was just awesome, and, yeah. and I thought that was just such a cool visual. And then I went up the way to Kakariko Village, and then, you know, talked to her about it. But, like, I got a I got that guy who gave me the picture for the memory. As I'm exploring the shrines around uh, Mount Lalaru, La- 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 yeah. I don't remember the name of the mountain. But the mountain, and then there's that village, Hebron Village. Okay. Um, I just was eating all of that up. Like, that region, yeah. I was hitting up every shrine. I was running around. That was, it was an extension of the plateau for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, yeah. like, the plateau's where I learned the basics. That's where I learned, like, a the lot game. of the meaty mechanics of how to do yeah. things. So, um, that's probably why. You were going right for those beasts, which there's nothing wrong with that. I was, you know, preparing Link. I was more focused on exploring this world and preparing myself. So I just believe in having courage, man. <laughs> no point. I, just uh, what about you, so. Kenny? Yeah. I took so uh, you three know my personality. I am usually the kind of person that hates side quests. That hates like I would hate doing shrines. Like I was worried about this game that I would hate those things. But I found myself. I came off the plateau and I said, "I'm going straight to Impa." I took your mm-hmm. approach yeah. to it. I was like, I'm going to go talk to Impa. On the way there, I got so distracted. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, so I could not... Who's Impa? Again? I could not keep it straight. I ended up, I think, playing about 15 hours before I went and talked to Impa. Yeah, I was a little bit less up, but in that neighborhood. I was running around, like, I was in the first finding three. everything. <laughs> and by the time I had like two or three towers, I kind of set it out in my head that before I finish much of the story, I'm filling out this map. I am getting to now each of these towers. that's very different than me. Yeah. I said, I'm going to get these towers. So I filled out the whole, like, from wow. Hyrule Field, like Central Hyrule East, had all the towers except the volcano area, like the Elden area, because I could not for the life of me find a Goron. I spent so much time looking for a Goron. I was texting in the group chat and stuff yeah. saying, like, I cannot find a Goron, because I wanted to get that heat-proof armor so yeah. I could go explore that. But um, that's what I did. I went after the towers, and I think I talked to Impa, and then I kind of took a similar approach. I went um, into the Zora. Did we all kind of start with the... Yeah, I did Zora... Goron, uh, the Gerudo, and then Rito. What did you do? How, what order did you do? I that? did weird. I did. Uh, I started with Zora. Rito, I kidding. went up to Zora um, first, and then I... Or no, actually, I went down to Gerudo first. That was the first thing I did. I went over to Gerudo. Wow. Did that, but what happened was when you got to the thing where you needed to talk to somebody to get the clothes... I like waited, but then I was I got scared because I'm so used to old mechanics of thinking with yeah. games. I went, I don't know if I should be here. I, I feel I feel like I want to get tore up yeah. in this area because I was already getting hurt in the desert. I couldn't really find the clothes. You hadn't talked to Empa. It yet. said it said uh, no. I talked to Empa. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, because I knew there was a big. But you, you, you were east and then west. But so you I, started thinking but, I shouldn't be here. So then I left and I went to Zora because I heard you guys had done that first. I was like, maybe that's the easiest. Okay, I'll go to that. Finished that one, then went back to Gerudo, then did the Goron place, and then I did. So the you, did, you did Rito last. Do what? You did the Rito. Yeah, I did Rito last. What did you? What order did you do? Uh, Gerudo. You did Gerudo last. Yeah, because I went. I went completely around. So Rito's so my did, third. You did Zora, Goron, Rito. I did it. Yeah. Zora, then. So funny story about your the clothes that you get from the old yeah. man. I knew from you talking about them that you had to get like clothes to get up to that snow area. So mm-hmm. I knew that they existed somewhere. Yeah. But he was gone because he disappears after. Yeah. And like so, I walked back there and I was like, I wonder if I can still get these clothes because I need something warm to go yeah. to the snow area. So I go back there, and it turns out if you go back after, you don't have to do the recipe stuff. There's a treasure chest he with just that. Oh, he leaves and it. he leaves you a note. He's like, says, sorry, you were yeah. dumb. <laughs> he, there's actually... <laughs> I, I didn't know that. that. I will say, he's an example of this, and there's a few other examples of where you can find journals. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, um, I know the Gerudo Princess mm-hmm. had a journal, and there were a couple other... Some of those, yeah. there were, and uh, I liked uh, Impa's little yes. daughter, granddaughter. Yeah. Uh, she yeah. was Hers one of my was favorite funny. characters. That was, yes. And her diary was hilarious. Yeah. Um, Zelda has Because she one gets too. younger. She's oh, yeah. Did you guys find Zelda? I did not. Yeah. No. Zelda, Zelda has good, one but too. That was funny because she's getting younger as she's writing. Yeah. She's like, I'm getting that this and whatever. Like, cause he's going backwards. She's it like, was funny. That was funny. So um, it's cool that we all took a different approach to the game. Yeah. Oh, but while you're talking about your like approaches for the game, so what I did is I came out from the plateau... And I knew I had to get over to, like, Impa. Yeah. Now, what I usually do with games of open world stuff, I'll actually start doing the main quest. Because along the way, I'm going to see stuff I like or whatever. And I know, it, like, I still feel almost like it's a tutorial thing. Like, yeah. they're still, like, trying to get you started on some stuff, how the game's going to feel. like. Uh-huh. So I went to Impa, did that. And what I like about this game is once you go there, there's not many main quests. Yeah. Honestly, there, there's little branches, but there's yeah. only main. There's only like four main Free branches. Well, and destroy destroy game. And destroy game. No, I think, and I loved that. And like that was technically the only, thing. So the only one you have to do. Period is it's destroy, destroy game. Ganon. Yeah. I think destroy Ganon can, is the main quest in the game. Can yeah. I? So something that I think this game is a revelation to me um, about is something I've always had trouble with with open world games. Um, I felt this way with Fallout 3 when I played it. Okay. Um, I felt this way with some of the Elder Scrolls games and um, definitely felt this way with from what I heard about Fallout 4 is there's this feeling of you start the game and the story that they set up traditionally in open world games, it's awkward because it's like, Oh, my son, or in yeah. a Fallout 4. Yeah. And so then, <laughs> when you make decisions to do something other than look for your son in Fallout 4, or look for your dad in Fallout 3, when you make decisions not what the story would have you do, it's fine, you can go do it, but it's narratively awkward. Because yeah. it's like, your character wouldn't be doing that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What I like about Zelda is, all of the hours I put in... Link was still in preparation. Every shrine yeah. existed to prepare Link to, to fight, fight Ganon. Yeah, that's all. Every side quest is proving to the townspeople that you are the long lost yeah. hero and restoring their faith in you. Yeah. All of the divine beasts aid you in that mission to defeat Ganon, literally, because if you don't fight them and kill them, his life bar is bigger when you go to fight him. Yeah, and it, you have to fight yeah, the you, ones. You have to fight those in the. Uh, the see, castle. I didn't even know that. Yeah, the bosses will because I'm an idiot and I really I uh, went to the castle one time just because I was fooling around <laughs> and I hadn't beat because I did them in a weird order. I did Zora. Then you have Rito, to fight those at the then castle. Goron, the, the, and then Goron. Then I stopped. You have to fight them. I stopped yeah. after the Goron one and I went to roam around the castle for a little bit because I thought I was I had big britches. That's and interesting. I walked in there and I was like, "This is where Ganon's supposed to be." So I went in there to kind of look around a little bit. And the little veil dropped behind me, and Thunderblight Ganon popped up in there. That, I was like, I was like, like kill me now, so I don't that's really spoil. surprising. So then not Ganon that. pops up. Yeah. Wow. Because uh, it makes sense because those things are like inhabiting those things. Yeah. Wow. They're, oh, they're, 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 they're going to spark you up if you try to kill Ganon. Holy, you know, I, I couldn't beat Thunderblight Ganon. Uh, yeah. And he was hard. He was a pain in the butt. Yeah, the first dude. one was hard. I I felt like, and we can kind of talk about bosses, I guess. Um, I felt like they were kind of easy in general, except for Thunder Black Thunder Black Man was and I don't know what it was. Yeah. I don't know the first one I I don't know what it was. He was 
vicious. Yes. Yeah. And he was my third one. And I, because I kind of felt like, I was like, I know what's going on Dude, with he's these. he's the last one. And it's weird yeah, because they didn't too. really need to have that different of skill sets. But yeah. I would have actually preferred if they were all as difficult as him. I ran out of food. Like, I was really having to. I, was I thought the, uh, the Zora one and the Rito one were on par with each other as far as difficulty. I thought Thunderblight Ganon was hard, but I thought the uh, Goron one was the hardest because when really? he popped up that flame shield, I could not figure out what to do. Well, no. I couldn't figure out how to hurt him. It took yeah. me. It took me a very long time. So and then I had some of that where I couldn't figure out what to do. Well, it I, took me a couple I tries, think I had, but he kept but exploding. Remember? Thunder Blight. When I figured it out, I still couldn't do it because yeah. because it was like Twitch time. He, and he was like, fast. He was, he was I mean, fast, he was yeah. quick. Yeah. And and that so Z targeting didn't work. Yeah. Was. I used the. I cheated a lot and used the. Uh, Rivali's Gale to get up in the air and slow my oh, arrows. Nice. See, I spam that. I a didn't lot. have like a ton of arrows to spare, so I'm like, if I did that, which of course it just didn't work as well as I thought it would. It just wasn't worth it. Mm. Like I don't know. I just well, well, I'm curious to hear what you guys, you know, because we're talking about bosses. We've kind of referenced the beasts. Yeah. We should talk about like your guys's, unless I, I don't, you know. What are the what were your guys' feelings on um, the beasts? As they're replacements for the dungeon. Yeah. The beasts and the shrines are replacements. But so I, I would like to talk about beasts and the shrines. Yeah. Yeah, Tisco's part of the gameplay, and I, I'll start. I'm cool with that. This is my biggest problem with the game. Um, I don't feel like they were a good replacement for what the traditional Zelda games brought. Gotcha. Um, the shrines were cool at first, and then once I got to number fifty, I was just like, well, this is repetitive. Hmm. This doesn't change for me. This isn't cool. And then, after I went through the first beast, I was like, oh, this was a neat concept. I'm using the map. I'm working with the map to c- collect five, what yeah. was it? Touch my Sheikah State, the five things, so I can fight Calamity, <laughs> form a Ganon. And then I was like, well, surely the second one would be different. No, it wasn't. And then the third one was the same, and the fourth one was the same. It really let me down. I wasn't challenged. And I, that's what kind of, like... The only challenging part of the game was Thunderbite Ganon and the castle. Mm. And the castle, I, I, I will never attempt again because it was hard. I can relate to you on the difficulty part. But I really, and, the, and I understand, like, hey, we made a hard mode. But the, it, wasn't the, it wasn't the combat that was hard. The parts that made the original Zelda games dungeons more special to me was figuring out what to do next. And this one, I knew what to do next because I know what, oh, I got to go up to this place so I just have to shift this over. Mm. It was really just right in front of you. I wasn't really stuck at first. So, I don't know. I just, it just wasn't enjoyable for me. Hmm. Gotcha. I, I think as the, uh, our approaches were different because mm-hmm. this game was about, like, hey, what's over on that mountain? Yeah. And you figuring out that and that the core of the game was discovery. If you, if the mindset was like a traditional game, then yeah, this game did poorly. Yeah. And, and that trying to like, seeing what to do next or whatever, because this game lays it out and says, you can go wild. You can go straight to Ganon, and be, it's going to be hard as heck, yeah. but you can. You make your own adventure. So you yeah. played a different game than I did, mm-hmm. honestly. Yeah. And you played a different, you know, and we all yeah. played different games because our adventure, we carved out our own adventure that nobody else played. Yeah. Basically, because we all had... I went to this different dungeon, whatever, first, but... My... Oh, go ahead. I was just going to get it back on track on, like, kind of the oh, subject. I, I wanted to touch on something with the beasts. Oh, I didn't yeah. know if you had something with the yeah, beasts. Um, I think it's a pretty big part of the game. I am half and half with you. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought the concept of controlling the beast yeah. from inside was really cool. I like yeah. that. Um, I thought that it I'm provided okay. for some interesting puzzles, because some of it was hard. And figuring out in the first one, in the elephant, that you had to yeah, control that, was that waterfall, so cool. yeah. that, that was, was awesome. cool. To me, yeah. And there were really neat concepts in the dungeons, but I also do feel like they were very hollow. Mm-hmm. They were mm-hmm. like very... No monsters. There weren't hardly any monsters. No. The eyeballs of the calamity well, goop like, would spit out yeah. fro- like skull heads or whatever, but that was nothing because you shot the eye out and they were gone. Um, I didn't feel like the dungeons were very... Um, I guess you could say challenging, yeah. but the, they was, all had the same concept of finding that yeah. thing. And I had any problem with that. Terminals. Yeah, you had to, and like you said, it was repetitive. I, however, I I think they tried a lot with the shrines just to fill out the map. Yeah, the there are a few essential concepts to shrines, 
Um, there are some shrines like the uh, one out on the Eventide Island, I think it is, where it's like it strips you of everything. Yeah. And then you like have to go around and get the orbs on the island, and that is the and shrine. And that's cool. That kind of stuff was cool. What but if, yeah, like the shrines did a good job of, like you said, preparing you. But eventually they did get. I, I haven't finished them all. I've done ninety six of them or something like that. On the topic of the shrines, as they relate to the beasts, and I, you probably noticed this because you did all the shrines too. In the regions themselves, mm -hmm. the types of shrines you would see were different. So yeah. in the Gerudo, you'd see a lot of electricity-based shrines. Yeah. Um, so honestly, it, in my mind, it's kind of like they took all of the puzzles that would have been in that dungeon, and they just broke it all up to bite-sized pieces and put it in and, that And area. I think that was so smart because it yeah. fixed the open world problem yeah. I was saying of like, this is so barren, they actually said, okay, then we'll place it so here and there so you have a For you, you were just running to the beast and doing it, so it felt empty. Um, it is a little empty, but what I experienced was I did all the shrines in the area, and then I did the beast where I had my fill of that's the all, elemental that's puzzles. That was my see, here's my kicker is I did almost half of the shrines. So, I mean, I understand what you're saying. Like, yeah, you, you left did, out a good chunk of them. I, I, you know. Hey, yeah, another half, you know, yeah. yeah, that's a big deal. But it's still, you, you beat the game, but, and it's your experience. I, yeah. I know, but I know what you're saying on the region, which says, yeah, yeah the, the shrines prepare Link for it. And I, I went into a couple, uh, I think it was the second one, uh, the Boron, when I went into it, I was underprepared, because I was like, I made a straight shot to it. And I was like, I went back, I did some shrines, and I yeah. trained my guy up. But I just feel like... In traditional Zelda games, the parts that drew me the most to it was the bosses I was fighting inside yeah. and the rewards I was getting for defeating those bosses. Yeah. I felt the bosses, and I, 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 I understand now because I didn't know they would be in a castle because it's hard to put like set-piece bosses into a castle, have them pop up randomly. If you didn't defeat them, yeah. they'd pop up. So I understand now a little bit more why they made them the way they did. I feel like the bosses kind of left me a desire. But you know what was cool? Variety. The castle felt like a traditional Zelda game. Because I got locked in yeah. rooms that I couldn't get past until I beat the boss. And I was like, okay, there's a Lionel in this stinking room with me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Frick. That yeah. castle was cool. And man. I had to that do it. I had to awesome. I had to beat it. it. But once I beat it, it was wide open. It, I got rewarded for it. Yeah. it. It was the easy... I actually looked it up. There was like four different ways that people like say are traditional ways to go through the castle. And one of the hardest ways is when you go just straight up the gut. And you just take all That's the That's what bosses. I started doing. Dude, it was hard. Like, it was. <laughs> and I didn't even really get to explore the castle as much as I would have liked. That thing is dense. Dude, yeah. That thing is dense. It got crazy. Plus the Guardian. Oh my gosh, dude. Can well, I talk about... I figured out the, the solution to Guardians for me was just pairing. Like, I got so good yes. at reflecting those beams. Once I learned really? how to hit them. You I parry? Parry. Once I learned you can <laughs> yeah. do that, you just reflect the you beam reflect and it kills them with them your one shield. Shot. If you miss, wow. you're going to break your yeah. shield. Pretty yeah, much. Yeah. The only yeah. shield that doesn't break is the Hylian shield. I parried but so... That's how I beat You send their beams back at them, and that is how you beat them. That's oh. how I beat Ganon, too. Yeah. Man, I... Man, I, I just ran like hell from the mic. Oh, my God. How did you beat Ganon? How did I beat Ganon? Yeah, I beat Ganon. Oh, you know how I beat Ganon? Uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, what's her name? Murphy's Grace? No, the other one. The, one, no, the, 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 the lightning dome. Is it Murphy's Grace? You use that? And it paralyzed them. Do you guys what? Know? What? So I do it, and it paralyzes them, and I just start going. Like, you I didn't even use that the, once. Uh, the lightning, what's the it called? The lightning, the lightning effect. Yeah. That's how I did it. Yeah. Dude, yeah! <laughs> that's how I done, dude. No, I, I carried it. Yeah, that's what I did. We waited. For it to recharge, yep. so I'd use it, and then I was—I didn't know how to do it. And he paralyzed. So I'm like, bam, bam, bam. He would reflect the. I know. Parry, I so parry. he would. I didn't know he would parry. charge up that. He would laser, shoot, and I'd parry and back, and back to him, him and run over and beat oh the crap out of him. Oh my gosh! I sat yeah. there. I, I remember. I was like, I want to text in the group chat how much I'm how wow. bad I am. So we waited until the we were dumb. We played it very dumb, and I just waited until the electric came out. At first, I was he was able to play. Like, I was able to play it, but then yeah. he kept blocking and doing something weird. Where so then out. I started using the electric, and that's when yeah. he started getting paralyzed, and I just went to town. When he him. started glowing red was when it got really hard. You had to time things yeah. better, and he did nope. different, like, quick shots. And, but, no, that's how, I mean, that was the Another way thing? to solve Guardians and Ganon. Stasis. Do you guys ever stasis him? I stasis. I, stasis. I didn't stasis him. I stasis in him. I stasis him. I never stasis him. And then anymore. run up. Really? Because it was useful? hard for me, because when you said, like, he's... He started moving faster and everything. And I like, you I'm that. at the very end of his health. I'm like, I just need an extra second. And if you stasis him, you literally get like two seconds. Oh, wow. So you, I stasis him, and it gave me enough time to get up there, 
charge up my uh, <laughs> lightning attack and finish them off. It was I would, uh, wow. No, I my secret to Guardians was get as close to them as possible mm-hmm. and wait for them to charge it up. And immediately after the laser goes away, when they go, like, they suck in the light, that's when you hit the parry button. And then you're so close that immediately by the time they fire, it sends it right back at them. Wow. And it'll stun them for a second. You can beat the crap out of them with Master Sword because it does double damage. I want to go back on the beast for one second because I felt like, yeah, they kind of almost copy-pasted those bosses. They were a little bit different. But I was having such a fun time like doing the shrines and the discovery stuff that, like like you said, when when you got to them, and I loved, like, how are we going to actually get on that thing? Yeah. And it became, like... On the Zora thing, you're like on a ski, like, yeah. like uh, ski now, or whatever, and like and cool. shooting stuff. I thought that was so fun, yeah. and then like we're gonna have to get up there and get it. And like once I experienced that first one, and then like the trunk and stuff, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Yeah. And part of me, when I I was like, wonder what the next like, you know, what's the trick to the next one? Like what you know what I mean? Like what's they're gonna be their theme? Or, yeah. and, and finding out it was the same thing. I didn't because I played so much in Discover thing. Now that we're talking and reviewing it, it's a little bit different. But in the moment, I didn't even think like anything of them. Yeah, I, because I was doing so much. And I enjoyed the NPCs. I, I loved. I actually loved the. I enjoyed stuff. getting to know the individual guardians yeah. themselves. Yeah, that, that was the, the champions. The yeah. champions. Yeah, that was um, really. Cool. That was cool. It was really cool, actually. Um, it kind of it kind of played on the fact that hey, Link's trying to get his memories together, and he gets to reunite with his unfortunate dead friends. Yeah. transitions us to story yeah let's talk about story. i felt like this story was told so efficiently mm-hmm. and the way they doled out is genius to say we're going to take all the cutscenes, set them in the past so they can happen at any time as yeah. flashbacks and you discover the story as you run around which was smart i think it's genius mm-hmm. and honestly it's it makes it hard to play other open world games that aren't it, like that it reminds because me of- it's you can do whatever you want for you can go get sidetracked yeah. for twenty hours and then yeah. discover another thing. It it, t- it took the <coughs> best of what Metroid Prime did. And Metroid Prime, you can go from beginning to end and just play the game, fight the bosses, whatever. Yeah. Or you can get these like little I think they're called Chozo ruins or Chozu like Chozu Chozo whatever the aliens are in the whatever the heck. Right on. Whatever they are, Chozo. and they have like these ruins or tablets and stuff you can um, read and it will say like, yeah. Um, this was the end of the world or something to us when this happened and blah, blah, blah. But, and then you'll go to the next one. It's like, but then this appeared. And you can kind of piece together like what happened. Like, oh, that was the thing that came towards them. Yeah. Or here's what, you know, here's what caused such, you know, the problem in the world. Yeah. But you can go the whole game not reading that. But the lot, you know, I played it again, you know, recently. And like, I wanted to re- seek those out because it yeah. was very yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Finding out about the story. Same thing with this. They yeah. took that concept and said, you can go from the beginning to end and play this game, whatever, carve out your own adventure, but there's, like, story here, yeah. and it's very cool, and it's like... And you the story get, adds a lot. Yeah, and you can get attached to the story, or yeah. you can just not do anything. Everybody so. got all the memories, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Did that. Okay. yeah. I, I felt like... Since you beeline through it, if you I, did it or not. I felt... And I have some uh, issues with the localization in English. Um, I, I just did not like the voice acting, but even in spite of that, I really liked how subtly the characters were written. And even though I disliked Zelda's voice almost completely, I really liked her character because she was yeah. conflicted and she seemed like she was having dad issues and she was having yeah. issues with what it her powers weird. were. That's weird. And I, I don't know. I was like, wow, you know, I've always been known as the guy because I joke with you guys because you guys like more story based Zeldas. I always been like, who needs a story in Zelda? Go kill Ganon. Yeah. That's the whole point. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I actually find myself saying this is the kind of story I can dig in a Zelda game yeah. where it's just these subtle character moments. And that's what I love. It wasn't these big, you know, crazy plot twists and stuff. It was character moments yeah. that built these characters. Yeah. And I'll give you credit for that. I, I think, it, to me, it's the best story they've I, ever done. Yeah. Because all the other I'm ones have been like... But like I said, it, it, they never need it. There was no story, really, in all the other ones. It's like, yeah, go get, get Ganon. Yeah. There's neat little tricks. Link Between Worlds was a recent one where it's like, ah, oh, it's neat. It's a very did. maturely little, told that, story. Yeah, but this They're one was very, mature. Would, it was like, yeah, it was her like fighting with her dad, and it was just like... Her struggling with like who has the power here and like yeah. do, am I Skyward Sword I least need... favorite gameplay favorite story. See, yeah. I don't. This is my I, second favorite. I actually don't want this one. Isn't my favorite story either. Yeah. It's a great story. I think it's well told compared to other stories. But for stories that grab me, I really love Twilight Princess. Mm-hmm. That, that story mode, that the whole story, the way they told it, and then like 
when you finally thought you beat the game and it just took you on a whole nother spin. Yeah. I just I, I just like the simplicity of this one and this I like one the is sub- very understated. I like, so you like, I like the, the subtlety of this one because the other ones uh, were just text and you just had to find out stuff. There was cool stuff happening, but this one had like voice acting and I think that was I think that actually paid off for him. I'm I thought right there with was... Travis though. I think for me, character development was still there even without voice acting. Mm-hmm. And I, the voice acting was so terrible that it was. I will tell you this: I sat down the day they announced that update, and I watched all of the memories again in Japanese. Yeah. And then I went and beat the boss again and watched the end of it in Japanese. Yeah. And I felt infinitely more attached to. The yeah, story. I for you guys that watch the podcast, you guys know that I was very upset when they said England or America's not getting. Anything but the English track. You can't do it. So I was excited because I wanted to just treat it like an anime. Like, it looks like an anime. I want to treat it like an anime. I just want to be in that world. I don't want to be worried about bad English voice acting. Well, we didn't get it. And then, <laughs> what was it a week ago? The day after I finished the game. Like, they announced, yep, uh, we're bringing Japanese voice acting to the English version game. I was like, you just can't do this to me. So I actually just let my sister borrow the game. Uh, she's borrowing my Switch right now because she's playing it. And she's playing it in Japanese. And I went over there and watched like one story scene, and I was like tearing up. And I, and I was like, I was like, this didn't have the emotional impact for me that it did when I watched it in English. But because I'm not, the Japanese voices are good. Number one, yeah. And number two, they're just so like it's like a Studio Ghibli movie. Yeah. Like it's literally like watching a Miyazaki film. Yeah. Yeah. And That's I, man. yeah. So I said I won't play it again. There's a possibility I might <laughs> play it again for the Japanese, but that's my only thought. Yeah, that's a bold. I, like, Maybe I'm alone in this. I liked the English. I was fine with the English. It was thing. okay. I, I'm sure the Japanese Link. has a. Oh, Right. Yeah, you know what? they weren't. They weren't all as bad as that. Yeah, I really now, like. I don't know. And, like, and you know, for that girl, she was doing her best. My, like, she's probably. You know, I don't know. I, I was not trying, I, trying to hate on her. I was just, fine with Zelda. Didn't. I was fine with her. But my favorite was the Goron. The Goron, I really. <coughs> His liked was so sad to yeah. me. He was like, "Come on." Yeah. Yeah. That's why I liked it Protect because you. there was parts when it was like. It felt like a Miyazaki film, but Did, like that voice was just like, "This is a go." Did anyone else feel like the the younger Goron with the hair oh had a completely out of? He was like, "Hey, Link!" Like he just yeah. had a normal His voice. voice. Yeah. His All voice was like, was hur, hur, and he's like, "Hey, how's it going?" And I'm like, "That sounds like me." Like it just sounds like a random white guy yeah. as a yeah. Goron. Real quick, I just want to throw back <coughs> hatred for that young Goron. I forgot. I did. I did not. I hated him. Yeah. He was stupid. He yeah. got me caught by so many guardians when we were trying to lead him up the mountain. Well, I, that I, I, was the point that, though. That was the point for his voice to be like, "Oh, oh I'm man. Goron." You know what he's I mean? like the Ishak, your little goofy, goofy Goron that will he's forever be his name too from now on. I loved the music, and here's how I'll explain what I think the music is in this game. Little farts. <laughs> that's a good oh thing. My God. Because you'll be climbing a mountain, or you'll see something, and all, all of a sudden you'll hear a random guy will fart out little piano noises. <laughs> So is it like enjoyable for you? Like, I love that simplicity, yeah. like little, there's little farts yeah. of a piano that would come out. And I loved, the, I thought that was so The neat. little diddles that would come on when you're riding the horse. Um, the yeah. only bit of music I didn't really care that much for was the battle music when you'd be fighting random. The boom, 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 boom. Yeah, that's kind of weird. I just kind of thought that was kind of plain. But, yeah, but, um, but I really enjoyed the music in general. Something I don't know a lot of you guys maybe don't know. The like little piano notes that play when you're riding on the horse. If you like listen to the theme song of like the like the Hyrule Field music, that's that. It is that chord, and they're just yeah. tapping notes yeah. around that chord. Oh, that's cool. did you know that? If so you ride they the literally horse at night. Yes. the music changes. Yeah, and it is beautiful. It plays the yeah. Zelda theme like very slowly, and so that's what. And and I was talking to my sister a little bit about this. Who's playing the game, and she's she knows a lot about music composition. She was saying that it seems like a lot of the music in this game. Is they took like the old songs yeah. and deconstructed them and said, "How few notes can we play and still get that yeah. feel?" Yeah, and to me, that's what oh. they did with Zelda in general. They so that alone it. makes yeah. it the perfect score for that, the game. That, and when and I've seen to... people that have said that it's not music or it's dumb and it's. I heard someone say it sounds like temporary music. You're dead. You're gone. <laughs> You're an idiot. You're gone. 
You're an idiot if you think that this yep. is bad music. I've heard people say that in reviews. This is bad music. It's it's temporary music. Yeah. Sounds like blah. Go home. Go away. <laughs> it's so stripped You're down. You're so crazy. It's You're... so stripped down to what it, yeah. the necessity. That's what kind of makes it is. Sub- it's, it's a subtle thing. Yeah. And they, like you said, even with the battle music isn't as like... Yeah. And it still ramps up. Like, they, like the, hey, the situation ramps up. That shrine music. Mm-hmm. That is a rehash yeah. of dungeon music. I, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say it's from Link's Awakening. But wow. I recognized it from a handheld. Wow. And it is a rehash of old dungeon music. And I noticed it immediately. And I said, I don't care. This cool. is going to be For amazing. me, I actually, when I would go to the dungeon, I would find myself humming Donkey Kong Country music. music because it that actually has the... Drip, drop the atmosphere. Yeah. It, actually, <laughs> it actually does sound I like that. Very similar. Have you noticed that when you're up in the mountains, it's the... Uh, like when it's cold out, it's the uh, Ocarina of Time in the beginning when it does the da na 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 na, which is also the flute from the NES Zelda. What? But when you're up in the mountains, it like no, it's a very elongated da na 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 na. I did like, not notice that. It's very elongated and it's yeah, because very, it's like, so stretched, stretched out. out. The tower music when you're climbing the tower too. That's a good piece yeah. of music. Yeah, yeah. And that's where I, and I was like, sad when I climbed my last tower and I was like, I'm not gonna hear. This I love the classic. I teared up a lot in this game because I thought they did such classy things with them, like introducing like, oh, here's the Zora place, here's the whatever's place. So, like seeing the Zora place and hearing that, that old like. You know, jazzy yeah. kind of like when you go in the Zora's domain. When that came back up and like swelled up, it was just like, oh, I'm gonna die. Like, because yeah. that was just so well done. You know, but... I never realized how much they associate jazz with Zora's. Yeah, that's kind yeah. of funny. I, I never, I just kind of like, I think of Majora's Mask and I'm thinking of yeah. I, of Time. Man, they really like jazz. <laughs> I really, I really, um, I really dug the town music. Yeah. Yes. The yep. Rito Village. Oh, yeah. And actually, while we're talking about music, the accordion. Bird guy. Oh yeah, then, like, then you get your full like. First of all, his character is awesome. Yeah. I just like him. I like how he's giving you these hints, and then you learn a little bit about. <laughs> and it's his... funny because you find sometimes like I don't know what I'm doing. Up yes, here. like yeah. he's in the middle of nowhere. Like, I don't yeah. know why I'm here. But, like, I he's this song. and uh, you know we're gonna spoil everything, so you definitely don't know this. You might not know this. Um, there is a really satisfying conclusion to his character that I wasn't expecting. Oh, I just thought you would see him around. Yeah. Well, and you're you're in Rito Village and you're doing side quests in Rito Village. And uh, you you help out like these little kids, these little kid oh. birds. Oh, yeah. And they yeah. go yeah. sing yeah. somewhere. And then yeah. and then so like you're talking to him, he's like, I miss my family and another part of the game, and then you're talking to these kids and you talk to his wife, and he's like, I miss my husband. And you don't make the connection and then like it all comes together and you're like, oh like these Cast are his kids, yep. and like, yeah. and they're all singing together on the porch. And he tells you about a shrine. It was one of my last shrines. It was nice because he was such an integral part of me doing so many shrines. My last shrine was I was on the porch with him and all his kids, and he's like, "That last one's down there." <laughs> I had it, it was uh, like that is really satisfying. Yeah. I hadn't figured that out. Like, well, I figured it out, but I didn't know for sure. So, like, yeah. they can, I haven't finished his little story arc, yeah. but. I figured, because I did do the shrine quest where you help them and you have yeah. to, like, blow the leaf through the holes and yep. make the notes. Um, so I knew that, like, I kind of had a feeling because she was like, my husband's gone. And yeah. I was like, I think that's Cass. I did not think of it. and It was very shocking. It was like, wow, that's yeah. so, so cool. So one more thing on the music. And yeah. It's, it's, it re- it's uh, about a side quest called Terrytown. Mm. I think that's, I don't know if that's the name of it, but uh, when you... Buy your house. You can buy a house in the Kakariko. I think it's Kakariko. Hebra. Hebra. Is it Hitano? Yeah, Hitano. Hitano. Yeah. Hitano. Yeah. Hitano. Yeah. Hitano. 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 Hakuna Makata. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you can buy the house there, and that kind of opens up a new quest where all of these like characters that are constructing the house and doing this construction yeah. all have the last name... Uh, I think it's Hudson, but they need to have like S O N. So what happens is you meet up, you find him later in the game on this little uh, another plateau area surrounded by water, and he's like, "Hey, I'm trying to build my own town. Yeah, I need help." And he's like, "Can you find somebody? I need uh, I need a Zora or whatever he asked for. Yeah, one of the races in the game." Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he says, "But they gotta have." S O N. It's in the contract. And, and, he's like, he's like contract. part of our contract is if they're gonna help me, they gotta have summon. Like. And this is one of my favorite side quests I've ever played in the game. Yeah. Because you start doing this, you bring the person back, and it's like, can you chop down some wood for me? We're trying to build this town. But what happens is it's very musically subtle, like mm-hmm. subtle. What happens? And what happens is, as you bring 
the new people in, you'll see, oh, there's a new house now. Like, I got the wood and stuff, yeah. and stuff's changed. Oh, there's a new house that's been built. So slowly it's slowly. And you can start to see it built, but when you first go there, it's those little fart pianos. But it's yeah. super basic. You get another person, and there's a new instrument that's been added. Oh. And it's from that area region of, like, the world. So when the Goron comes in, it's for... Like bassy, very, oh. very loud, so you, and then you bring adds. in you bring in the Gerudo, and it brings in strings or whatever they bring yeah. in. But they each, and by the end of it, when it's completed, it is a whole orchestra sound. It is an awesome sound, signifying that like this town is very diverse. Even Hudson marries out of his race yeah, to he marries, to, Gerudo he marries the Gerudo. So it's this whole diverse town that has. And they built. set up shops yeah. for you of things that are useful from their people. And, and you and needed everyone to complete this town. It's, it's beautiful. It's so, awesome. And then all the music is adding different things and they needed all to come together to make this beautiful sound. That's and awesome. And it's like, oh, that's, now, So that's one of my that's favorites. Cool. I like that. Yeah, one of my favorite it's like was ever like that was yeah. incredible. I'm so that's still I'm, in the middle of that, but that like oh, I knew going into it, it was probably gonna get spoiled because I've heard very good things about it. But that is awesome that they like do that. But I mean, you music. could probably already tell. The I'm gonna try and pay. It. Yeah, I've only done the Goron. Yeah, uh, so but I'm, I'm gonna try agree. and like start paying attention to that. We'll, the, we'll agree. The music is absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's very good. Yeah, yeah. or and we'll kill you if you say otherwise. <laughs> The graphics in this game, um, I first was looking forward to because there was there was kind of a it seemed like a little pattern with the Zelda games where it was going to be Ocarina of Time. Then we had this cartoony Wind Waker, and it was like, okay, we'll be okay if you make a more yeah. realistic one. Then we got Twilight Princess, more gritty. Yep. This. Then the following one, Skyward Sword, because so I was going, okay, guess what? It's one of the realistic turn. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what you thought before. That's the what I was. thought. So when they showed, it, I was just like, uh. But then I watched the trailer again, that first teaser thing, and I was just like, this looks like a Miyazaki film. Yeah. I'm in. Like I mm -hmm. and I I hated the Skyward Sword art style. It looked like uh, it was muddy. It looked it was a muddy. It was it dirty. The the graphics just didn't do it for me. So uh, at first I was kind of burnt by that. Like, are we still doing the cartoony thing? I get it, but man, it, it was beautiful. I I love that they went with that. I think it worked for them perfectly. And I want to say one thing real quick on how it definitely worked out for them. And that was with. There was a side quest where you could go um, into like kind of a dark area and use. Now you hated this quest, but no, kind of, I didn't hate it. Uh, I, I, got, I, I, I know really what you're talking it. about. And use I, the light to kind of like light where you were going. Are you talking oh, about the ruins? Oh, you're talking. No, you're talking about the woods. Yeah, I'm talking about like when you had to like use fire. There was a shrine quest where you yeah, had to, it was you, in the ruins. Throw, you had to like completely pitch oh, black. Ruins. It was completely I like the black. Ruins. It was completely that, black. I, I come back later. But. I that aggravated. Loved me. it because it reminded me of an old PS1 N64 game because you yeah. couldn't see three yeah. feet in front of you, so you had to kind of like fill around, and it felt like back in the days when like to an extreme degree of when the draw distance was bad. Yeah, where you can't see. Three feet in front of you, you're blind. That like, scared the that... crap out of me when I found the Hinox that was. Yeah, in yeah. Oh, I <laughs> was like, what? Too. I, I was, I had played, fought a lot of Hinoxes. Yeah. I was like, what? Is I hadn't that? fought. I hadn't fought any Hinoxes. Oh, wow. That was your first one. I didn't fight it. I just went. I'm gonna not wow. fight that. Or did you have to fight it? To get no, you had to. You could, or you could sneak on it. Yeah, and I snuck past him because I saw that. Well, no, you had. I to didn't fight the Hinoxes till late in the game. So that's a great example of the shrines that were like the environment was a shrine, like the the Tide Island that yeah. and the labyrinths but the uh, graphics for that was cool well, yeah. and then another part when it was incredible another incredible moment for me but it has to do with the graphics was finding the blue dragon up on that snow mountain um, i was just exploring getting korok seeds or just running around and i turn the corner i go up and i go what <laughs> the frick is that and yeah. i see it off in the distance yeah. it's too off in the distance the graphics and the draw distance or what like there was snow blizzard and stuff yeah. it was just enough obscured where I went, I'm scared of that thing. <laughs> Will that thing eat me and what you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm scared. Like legitimately I don't want to get worried. Out there. Yeah, and I was like, I'm gonna go near it, but I'm I'm really scared. <laughs> like I ran towards first the, encounter with those dragons. With the dragons was that. So I, I did see the one, one when it, you went across the bridge. The yellow the, one. The uh, yellow one, Roche but I was like, how am I gonna fight that? How do I get up to it? I was like, I don't have the right stuff to get So my thing. first time I, it was early in the game and uh, I was playing with one of our friends and he has he's played like Wind Waker and Twilight Princess and he said I watched me he was like what's that I didn't even see it and he points off and I was like what is that thing? <laughs> I look up just as it's opening a portal into the sky yeah. and disappearing and I was like 
I gotta find this thing. Yeah. So I end up running around into the um, I forget what the area is. It's like the tropical area with the brown cliffs and the palm trees. Yeah. And I I was trying to get to the tower there because this was in the beginning of the game and I was trying to just fill in yeah. all the towers. And uh, I'm climbing up this rock and I had so little stamina that I was like, it took me so many tries of trying to climb these rocks and time my jumps right and yeah. all this. And I get up on top and there's this waterfall and I hear the music. Yeah, starting and the wind comes by and I'm like, what's going on? I look around and I see it. and That shocked me. And my friend Andy's sitting there and he's like, what are you going to do? You just climb up all these mountains and you're right in front of this tower. And I was like, I'm jumping off and chasing this thing. I jumped off. And got real close to it, and I landed on its back, yeah. and it shocked me. Yeah. And I fell off into this uh-huh. big water and yeah. drowned because I had no stamina left. Yeah. And thankfully, it teleported me back up on top before I jumped. Oh, I was cool. like, that was my first encounter with them. Was like, I had I had found it, went off into something else, and ran into it again, and it would just it baffled me. Yeah. And I was like, what am I supposed there to do? There was so with this much, thing? and it's funny, like. Well, I'll just get back on the graphics. So we can the graphics that really looked good with these big, the beasts, the dragons, yeah. the mountains, the way the light bounced off the mountains. Beautiful. The vistas looked amazing. And I heard people could play about draw distance. I didn't, I didn't I don't think, see, I don't it, know. Was, no, it was beautiful. Maybe the way you version This of game was like, uh, everywhere you looked was a screensaver. And yeah, that's why awesome. I think what was a shame was the lack of power within the Switch. I, I don't think, think it's... Uh, I feel like that was something that really bothered me. I had to drop the game to 720p just to get a full, like, enjoy, like, I actually enjoy it. Hmm. I just did I couldn't run it at 1080 To me, this was validation that I, for as far as Nintendo's purposes, that's plenty powerful enough. Yeah. Like, this is all I need. Uh, I, um, smooth out the frames in the forest, if possible, but... Yeah, that part was but, really like, bad. But, like, this, this validated to me that Nintendo doesn't need to compete with the Super, with the yeah, PS4. I understand stuff. that, but it's the fact that I still can't get smooth gameplay. That kind you, of bothered me. Well, yeah, I, I don't know. I know this doesn't um, justify their launch, Okay, what did everybody but... play primarily? Handheld versus... I played on screen. You played on screen. I did screen. You did... I did a, a lot mix, of maybe? both. I a did a lot in... I will say that on the handheld... It looks a lot better. Yeah. Just beca- I mean, it's right in your face, and the screen's nice. Sharp, and yeah. I have like a old, older Vizio TV, so I, it's not like newer. But um, I will say I did do your trick. I turned it down to 720p, mm. and I didn't notice a difference graphically. Really? Like, or not I graphically. Play. I mean, um, I didn't notice a difference in lagging because I was on 720p when my worst game break happened. I was riding on a horse through a Hyrule field. It was raining. And three guardians were chasing me, and they all three fired at the same time, and the game froze. I had to reset it. Mm-hmm. It did not. It would not come back. I waited yeah. for a minute, and I could not get it to come back. I had to close it power. and bring it back. I, I, just, like I said it that since I'm in 2017, why can I not get 30 frames consistently throughout the whole game? Well, you're a PC snob now. Like. I'm not like that. It's just like, well, I mean, you know, this doesn't take away from... The game is still good. I don't want you guys to say anything, oh, hey, this game is... I th- I think that, that I think you got to keep in mind um, it's a handheld, uh, and I it's mean a, if you look at a PS4 like it's a lot bigger than a Switch yeah. like yeah but it's to me I'm amazed like I'm not disappointed I'm amazed that they got Zelda one I'm basically yeah. what is a beefed up phone processor yeah to me like I'm like phenomenally happy. Yeah. But and they fixed it. Yeah. Like even the worst area, which was the, a fair the forest criticism. where the master sword is, they fixed a lot of that. That still is like kind of kind of sucky. Which but, sucks because that was the most beautiful part. I think. Out of but the no, the area. last time I was there a couple weeks ago because I've been running around doing the shrines. It was not very bad. It, oh, like, it's yeah. a lot better. It is much better. And There's I don't no have, problem, but it's it, it's, it's. I don't improved. have any frame rate issues anymore when fighting monsters. I don't have any frame rate issues anymore when it's raining. I haven't had any of those. It's only in the forest that I have a few drops. Yeah. Ah, it's because of grass. It's always because of grass. It it's the grass. Grass. When you see grass move, then you know it's going to drop. So <laughs> yeah. I, I was actually surprised with this game, too, with the frames of, like I said at the beginning, that like I was so scared that it was going to yeah. ruin the experience. But it ended up not being as bad as I yeah, thought. Yeah, it didn't ruin my experience, either. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, I was somewhat disappointed. I really kind of just expected, you know, we could have a shot and lock in 30 frames. Hmm. Yeah. It is what it is. Didn't ruin the gameplay. It's gotcha. just one of those things I kind of was snobby about, which you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so last thing is gameplay, because that's kind of the meat of this whole game. Like, music, whatever, also, like, does a great job, but it's all, 
kind of basically is the dressing on top of the game. You know what I mean? Like it's all kind of, you know, yeah. trying to build up the gameplay. <clears throat> yeah. Because uh, that was the core of it, and I'm so glad. I had a big problem with Skyward Sword. <laughs> that game was three hours of tutorial right at the gate. Yep. So much hand holding. Every single thing you did, this freaking being came out called Fee. I have a calculation that um, this item it, it will help you. It, it can do this, A, B, and C. Um, you might want to go here next. That's my calculation, and I'm 89% sure. Shut up! Like, are you kidding me? Like, leave me alone. I hated Skyward Sword. So going into this, I did not have high expectations. This game was the antithesis to that. No <laughs> hand-holding. You come at the thing, you can run... You know what I mean? Like, after the plateau, you can do whatever you want. Like, yeah. it, it opens the world to you to the point where, like, you could just get lost in it. So I freaking loved the gameplay. I mean, they created these... Core concepts, they called it the chemistry system, is what we were playing. These, like, okay, fire, you know, interacts with grass. It will catch us on fire. Yeah. You can use the Octorok balloons, and that will float things. Like, there was everything that interacted. Like, we all could do shrines a different way. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, in certain ways, you can you can do, do that, or you can fight that thing to you do this. You can use your metal sword to conduct electricity. Yeah, or, you yeah. can um, cut down a tree and use that as a boat to go I really liked all that stuff, yeah. Like, interacting with that to the point where it was, like, really cool hearing about, like, people, like, oh, yeah, I made my own airship. What? And the developers mm -hmm. were like, what? What'd you do? And like the testers were like, yeah, put the aqua rock balloons on a raft. boat on a raft, and it becomes an airship. Mm. You can actually float your own stuff like that. Discovering your own way to get through the game was yeah incredible. I, like, some of the best gameplay I've ever played with Metal Gear Solid Five. I, like, I echo with that. everything you're saying for sure. Um, I had a couple things that didn't really resonate with me too much. One was the sword play was totally adequate. Um, but it felt so cheapened by the fact that any time I got hurt, I could go to my menu and eat one of my 20 meals. Um, and so there's no animation or penalty for that either. Um, something I would have liked is where you can equip meals and you can press a button to eat them, but he's going to have to take a second and eat it. Yeah. Um, I think that would have been a nice way to make it to where you can make as much food as you want and carry it around. It's not going to spoil or anything. But it cheapened a lot of the fights that I literally just had. Cause you just cook a bunch of meals yeah. at once. I had like 20, you know, meals that will fully replenish my health. Okay, I fight for a second, lose some hearts, eat something. Lose some hearts, yeah. eat something. I could have technically penalized myself and not allowed myself to do that. Yeah, but, but see, I, I would have preferred see. that they built that into the game and make it to where I can equip food yeah. and I can eat it, but it's going to take me like, he goes, or something. Yeah. I because it's make... like, I just, I did not like that and it cheapened a lot of the combat. I can see me. that, but I never made any meals a lot. Really? At all. So that's oh, really? kind of struggle. I was oh, eating wow. a billion apples, so when I would got hit, that was a bad problem. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I, yeah. I basically made the game tougher. I would take some way. meat and throw it in some milk and some butter and some salt. No, I, and I, 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 was, I, was, I was, by like 15 hours in, I was noticing that on the stables there are recipes, and I was reading like the things, and it would say like on a hearty radish, like it would uh, temporarily yeah. increase your heart. So I was like... Combine it. I was like, what would you combine a radish with? And I was like, I don't know, apples? Uh, I was just mixing <laughs> weird stuff and coming up with weird things. I loved when you made a bad recipe. Oh, my God. It was, it was like W's food or whatever. Yeah, or, yeah, and then it had like pixelated. Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. Like, but I, no, like you it's figure too bad out, to like, saying. You figure out like if you cook like, oh, you, you start to learn like things say like hearty. So it's like you've got hearty salmon and hearty radish and hearty durians. And you throw all that together and it like gives you a max... Uh, health and then it gives you like a bunch of temporary yeah. hearts. Like that's See, how I was I did too the, stupid to do the cooking stuff, so I never messed with it. There was like stamina bass, but then there was like a uh, stamella mushroom. So it was like you know if you cook the stamella mushroom with the stamina bass, you're gonna get something that boosts your stamina. Yeah. So it was like that was cool. Like mighty things increased your attacks and things like that. So I just learned to like look at commonalities in the name and. Yeah. Do in, that to cook in food. what you're talking about. This same thing. And early on, I think I see what Zach's saying though, is because like I, if you got hit once, you died. Yeah, that was true. Like, early early on, on, once you got past like six hearts, then you started to get away with like I have a half hearted heart left. I'm about to eat well, twenty apples. And know? it kind of takes us into the connected issue of really in the fields. 
really repetitive bestiary oh or a number God. of types of enemies. And it's maybe my biggest gripe with the game. I would agree. Is I don't need to just see Bacoblins everywhere. Like... We've got a big bestiary, a and Zelda, that's what... and I understand that they were trying to keep things consistent, um, and they had, like the choo choos and stuff, and I, and I didn't realize that you could use a choo choo jelly and, and and put it with elements and do stuff. And I thought that was cool. I, I could have used a lot more variety. And um, there were it was pretty limited. Running into the same like Lizifols, you run out of and Buckle Blends all the time. The occasional Octorok, which even those weren't very wide. You run out of those for the camps themselves. You. Early in the game, you would go raid a camp because there's a good possibility there'll there's be a, a nice item. chest. Once you have good items out the wazoo, yeah, I stopped going. You just yeah. run by them. Yeah, I, I never see, dealt with them. And that's where I think that these camps, um, I they weren't what they could have been. Um, I would very much felt a little undercooked. That just specific element. Right, seeing dude. them add new enemies to, and I mean we know they're going to add on to their the first DLC, which I thought was awesome. The second one coming out this winter with a new dungeon. Hey, how about you with this new original story yeah. and new dungeon? Give me some new enemies because there are so many enemies. Yeah. There, like likes. I would have loved to see like likes. Oh, in a game awesome. where Wall you masters, lose, you know. in a game where you lose items by them breaking so easily, yeah. why would you not put the enemy in Keep them that shots. eats you and takes away yeah. an item? Yeah, yeah. I, I just think that, and obviously they had their hands full with lots of other yeah. parts of this that game. That is true. I, I do think, at least for the regions, you know, like, you could have Bacoblins That's in the what, east, but, like, you could do four different main But they did that in other Zelda really. games. Like, when you go in different yeah. Zelda, uh, dungeons, you had different mm. enemies in each one. Yeah. yeah. It got repetitive to me, big and time. That, again, for me, I just love the combat in Zelda games. Yeah. I, just because I fell in love with it. And so that, that's what kind of upset me, too, yeah. was, like... Why would I raid a camp? Like you said, yeah. like what, yeah. what purpose is and, there? And on the topic of loot, like, and I don't know if anyone else felt this way, um, with the shrines, like about half of them to two thirds of them are actually interesting, um, and a third of them are not interesting. Yeah. Um, the test of strength, I have no problem with test of strength. I have no problem doing more than one of a strong test of strength. There's zero creativity that went into it. It's just <laughs> a bigger life bar. Like, they could have had you fight two of these things at once, or they yeah. could have had you do. It is the same exact I one like, creature. I feel like there the wasn't exact... that many to where it was an issue for me. Uh, there are 25 of them in the game. 25? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I must have and, 20 of them. And not just that. There's, there's a bunch of tests of strength. It was so weird what you would get. I would do a minimum, like an easy test of strength that you would do early in the game and get like a mega powerful weapon. And then there were late game ones that I would do and it was a major test of strength. And I get like a f eight power halberd. And it's yeah. like... They know programming, and it's not random. That's what's set up to be there. Oh. I'm like, that just feels to me so, like, not thought out of, like, if I defeat a major, like, a major test of strength, I'm not going to use a level 8 halberd. You should be like, getting golden flaming sword. Yeah. yeah, so I think that this, so that's one thing I would like to see Nintendo improve. Um, don't, I mean, don't patch it. The game is what it is. Going forward, though, like, scale out the loot, like, in a way that makes a little bit more sense. Um, I guess it was hard because you can really go any different direction. Yeah, but you're not going to defeat a major test of strength. I, I did. I er, When? I don't know if it was... It but was she, the medium one. Okay. But it was, like, very early. Yeah. I flew over on to where the beach was. But wouldn't you have liked the reward to be this powerful weapon? And it was so hard, and I don't remember what I got. It was pretty good at that time because yeah. it was so early in the game, but it's kind of hard to tell in certain... Things but like, no, no, no. I disagree because regardless of what their level is, if they defeat the guardian, yeah. it should be a better prize yeah. for a stronger guardian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Period. Yeah. Like if they defeat it and they've not done anything else and they go yeah. and defeat a major, awesome. They should get a powerful weapon, not a level eight halberd, because yeah. you're not going to use it. Yeah. I don't know. I just that's that was a gripe for me. So, I guess that this kind of leaves us to this final point. It leads it to the the. I have, I have I have I have a couple more points. I want, I really want to talk about. Gameplay for the final dungeon because oh, okay. the final dungeon to me, every almost every game I've almost ever played <laughs> kind of peters out at the end. Yeah, I will tell you, uh, I, I'll tell you that, like, it, it, you, here's how it goes going through the world, do this, do that, and then what is every end game? Dark dungeon castle with flames shooting at the side, and everybody, all the care, all the enemies you see in the game are a dark variant yeah. with red eyes. That's every single game yeah. you've ever played in your life. Yep. And I am just so tired of that. 
it's every game. So this, uh, so Zelda though. Okay, there's this mysterious castle. Okay, everything I've kind of already said. Like, yeah. okay, it's a tar castle, whatever. But man, did I freaking love this! Like, I loved it. I felt it was the strongest ending that, like, ending level yeah. to any game I've ever played. It felt like you were scaling this thing. It felt like every. It took me eighty. I, it took me eighty or ninety hours to get to the castle. Yeah. And it felt like this is the moment I've yeah. been preparing. And I felt like a test. For. I was dying. Yeah. I was getting. I was slayed. dying a lot. There was. The, they were. I was shooting. using every ability except for the lightning one because I yeah. forgot I had it. But I was using Revali's Gale. I was using Mitha's Grace. I was using. Everything well, everyone was using Mipha's great. But but I was, you know, using bomb arrows. I was like, I had built up this arsenal of, like, bomb arrows. I was like, yeah. screw it, I'm going out, and I'm yeah. using them. And you know what was... I, it was, it it just was satisfying. Was, and then the music. Mm. I had to, I was tearing up. I get weird. I'm a weird guy. I tear up at, like, emotional parts, but I also tear up, like, design... If I see something artistically that is impressive. Or, like, wow, the work that went into it and the thought that went into it. I tear yeah. up like an idiot. And that's what I did. Like I was tearing up during this castle because it was like the music swelling, and like you really feel like you're on this epic yeah. finale, this giant thing that you've tried to conquer. Here you're at. Like everything you build up for and studied for. Here's graduation day. Yeah. And it's like oh my gosh. Like I this really. It was very bittersweet to do that final. Yeah, part. I didn't and want to I walk through that to. final thing. Like, and, oh, I gotta end this. And I guess as long as we're on the topic of the end. Um, you know, you fight Ganon down in the castle, but then you go out to the field and you fight the true form of yeah. Ganon. Yeah. That was so iconic. Yeah. I got a blood red moon. I don't know if that's normal. I got a red moon that rose, like, yeah. during that I think, part. I think that happened to me. And I just, like, took 80 screenshots. Yeah. I was, like, with this giant You're, like, stopping. I'm on a white horse. Yeah. And there's a, you know, it's the crazy it was... part. My horse died. So I'm, like, I'm running around the area, like, I just need to shoot one you last You know what thing. I did? I was, I was... Cursing, I was so angry. <laughs> I kept shooting at Ganon, like the big Ganon with my bow and arrow, and it wasn't doing anything. She was like, shoot, 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 shoot. And I was like, I am, I am. And I was like, it's shoot. not doing anything. Well, she gave me a bow and arrow, and I just kept shooting. I didn't realize I never switched from my bow. I wasted like 80 oh arrows gosh. shooting Ganon, yeah, and then I realized I was like, I just am not using the right bow. See, I was used to, this so, was a callback to know. the other Zeldas to me, yeah. where she would give you the bow. Yeah. So I was like, oh yeah, I gotta get that new bow that she equipped. So that was on my mind. See, I, didn't even know I will that. say though, I, yeah, I love the ending. I love that it was out in the field and stuff. But I got, I got to tip my hat. Does everybody beat Twilight Princess? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Twilight Princess has my favorite ending to any of them. Yeah. Because in that one, and I was actually looking for, I was, I was holding out hope that they would do this. It isn't a big thing that they didn't. But would love to see in, in the end of Twilight Princess. You're fighting, you're doing, you do the big, you know, boss, Ganon, whatever, mm -hmm. but then you go to the field, and it's just you and Ganon with a sword fight, and it's so mm -hmm. basic, and yeah. I wish we could have got, like, maybe something that, and you only had, like, a basic sword, or, you know what I mean, yeah. like, to try to fight, I like, would have loved that. maybe just, the master sword got knocked out, and they, they threw it. a yeah. stick or something, it's like, take him out with a stick, you know what I mean, like, get yeah. very basic, that would have been cool, um, and then Twilight Princess ends with, like, you killing Ganon, and he dies standing up, and it's like... Yeah. Like, uh, nothing has stopped that for me. But this was very, like, awesome and just, like, it was such a, it was such a breath of fresh air, breath of wild fresh air, <laughs> um, to get, you know, a satisfying ending, a yeah. satisfying level, in level design. Because yeah. I feel like at the end they're like, ship this game, alright, we'll put black walls, they're, the walls are black now, yeah. and, and bleeding. And nothing cool. speaks to the testament of this game more than I had put in 110 hours, I beat Ganon. Yeah. And it loads you back to where your last save, and uh, I jumped right back in and yeah. started doing yeah. more stuff. And I that's, did the same thing. And that's the thing is like you know, there's still so much more to talk yeah. about. But it's like if if you're not playing this game and you're you've watched yeah. this video, you really should play it. So. And and one more thing on end stuff was I was 85 hours in. I was and I would I was getting basically all the shrines before I beat the game. Mm. I was right at the end. Like I had like eight left. Uh, and I was like, okay, I finally have felt I have seen everything. But I'm still yeah. having fun. But I, I have seen everything. I warped to a shrine. I don't know if you guys have even experienced this. I warped to a certain shrine and looked up later what happened. And I come out and the world turns blue. Everything turns blue and there's like a veil around everything. And the world gets really just like mystical. And I can't see anything outside of this little place. And I go around and I see... Have you seen those little blue rabbits? Yep. Yeah. 
Oh, there I know. Are I know what you found. Thirty of them. Yes. And I'm like, what the frick? And I start to get close, and they kind of all run away. Mm-hmm. And I look up later what happens. There is a god. I, I've, <laughs> I, I've seen that. I've that mounted it. Up. I've mounted that thing and tried to, to like, because you can get on it and yeah. try and, and I have not, I've failed. I to, looked up on I, I don't know what I happens. I wrote it around Hyrule. Yeah. Oh my gosh, really? It's really stinking awesome. It's, and you, I, if you get off of it, it goes away, but it's called the King of the Mountain. And a yeah. lot of people say it's like a tribute to Iwata. Because that mountain is like called wow. like Satori. Oh. It's Satori Mountain, and that's wow. the king of the mountain. It's like the divine being. That's cool. And uh, so you can you have to um, wow. You have to have. I used the the Sheikah suit to sneak on it, and then I ate one See, of I those wish I biscuits from that See, guy at sh- that stable yeah. that gives you an extra whole bar of stamina. I had four bars. Yeah. I, I set it. up a campfire on the tower that you can see over there because it'll actually happen when you. Are just looking at it. It'll have this yeah. weird. It gets that shroud. Aura. I have seen that aura like the whole game, like the whole game. I kept seeing yeah. it. And I was like, "What the heck is that?" Yeah. And I finally got there one night when it was there, and it yeah, it I, blew me away. Yeah, I was just like, on the edge eighty-five hours yeah. in, I was like, "Wait, I still don't know what the heck's going on with this <laughs> game." Like there was that little thing. I didn't know you could ride. You could jump onto. Uh, um, the like the deer, yeah, you can or ride the, a buck. The, the, yeah, yeah, buck. And they I, they I ride all weird. Did you guys ever ride the skeleton horses? Yep. Yeah. No, but I, I did. Heard about I did, and I rode around, and it was so yeah. much fun. I, and but, then until the sun comes up, and then they die right yeah. from underneath the vehicle. I tried to I tried to board the skeleton horse, and the guy freaked out. He's like, "Get that thing out! Of here. <laughs> yeah. Get that thing out!" Of here. <laughs> oh my gosh! Did get you guys that find thing? Yeah. Uh, the like legendary horses in the game, the the giant one that's supposed to be. Like, found the Ganon's giant horse. one. I found the royal family sword. Zelda's yeah. the white one. Yeah, those are the two I found. I want to talk about too the master sword because my experience with the master sword made me like, well, it teared me up when you finally got it because it almost goes to a little cutscene yeah. like, of the thing and it shows the sword or whatever and like I teared up because I was like the way they handled this is so classy yeah, and, and like gave me chills to like get there and it's such a big ordeal. Um, but what happened to me was I tried to grab it. I'd press A or whatever, and then it flew out. I was like, you're not strong enough. And it was like, but here's, we're going to tell you about these shrines in this forest. Go check them out. You know, power yourself up so you can get it. Well, it, the, the stars aligned for me the way the, when I came to it because I was weak. I was too weak to pull it out. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dang, I'm too weak. Well, at least there's four shrines in this area. So I went and did them, and I was like, do I, do I have enough? Because I was too weak then, and I had just enough wow. to do it. I pressed A, it went to the thing. I was just on the last that's heart, like, like half of the heart. Boom! He pulls it out, and I was like, <gasps> "That's like, like goosebumps." See, like, no, that's like ideal. When like, they made this game, yeah, they were hoping yeah. that would for and me. That I found me. the master sword when I had like already sixteen dollars, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, "All right, let's go." Yeah, hold it. And, it had it perfect. If I'm not me, mistaken, like, you told me that I didn't have enough hearts. And you told me that I had to have like thirteen or something. You kind of ruined it. For I died my life. You were, you were I learned me. very early on in this game not to talk to you about <laughs> it. I tried my best, guys. You know, because I, I was I saw Eventide Island on the map, and he's like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "I'm thinking about going to this island." He's like, "Did you play Link's Awakening?" I was like, "No." He's like, "It won't mean anything to you." <laughs> I was like, um, hey, "I did. I did not that that matters, yeah. but it's just." I tried my best, guys, not to talk to you about this game. Like, I think I did pretty well for what I normally do. <laughs> yeah. I did thoroughly enjoy the callbacks because Link's Awakening is probably my third or fourth favorite Zelda game of all time. I really enjoyed the callbacks to that and to yeah. all the other ones. There were a lot of yeah. callbacks all over the I map. like that one in that one cutscene when Zelda says, you know, whether lost in time or in the twilight or skyward bound. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah I, didn't I like really, that. really, really like that um, when she's knighting Link. She's yeah, like, yeah. regardless of where you go, and she references the other games. I thought that was pretty I cool. I loved when when the blood moon rised for the rose or whatever for the first blood time. That freaked me again. out. Yeah. I was like, what the heck's going on? Yeah. The blood moon rises. The blood moon rises. Um... <laughs> But cool. yeah, so ultimately, uh, you know, final, you know, final say. Yeah. I have to say this: I've not played a game. Metal Gear Solid Five is the only thing in the same realm yeah. of feeling like a game that, like, I didn't want it to end. I just I rang out the freaking rag of this game. I just wanted to get every drop yeah. and just savor every drop. And I felt so like I did not want it to end. But 100 hours in, I was like, I gotta, I gotta end this. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I really have not enjoyed a game like this. I felt like this game was 
such an antithesis to the current design of a lot of games mm-hmm. with hand holding tutorials. Make sure there are this and this or whatever. We don't want so, them to miss this thing we work yeah, hard so on. Yeah, so stripped down. It felt like they took people back in the NES developer days of making the first Zelda and like time warped them to yeah. this time. So, okay, make a game. Okay, this is how we would do it. Yeah. Yeah. And it was that classic stripped down, what makes a game fun, and they focused and went back to the roots, baby. Yeah. It was, to me, it is a it is my final score a classic. I got. I have to give it a classic because I have not enjoyed. Like it's one of my favorite games of all time. Honestly, it's in the top whatever. I haven't really thought that much in it. It's yeah. in the top whatever list that I can make because it just did everything so well for me. Hundred hours in, I was still experiencing. Like I said, new stuff, yeah. <laughs> like discovering. Made my yeah. own adventure. No other game has done that cool. to this level to me. So classic, absolutely a classic. Awesome. I give it a classic as well. Um, I'm 110 hours in, and I'm still discovering new things. I found a bear the other day, and I was like, oh, there's a bear. I wonder if I can ride that. And you're riding a bear. And so it's like, uh, I I still haven't found all the shrines, so I'm exploring still more of the map. Uh, The fact that I have played so much of this game and done so much and beat it and still play it, because I'm the kind of guy who, like, doesn't normally do that. Normally, once I beat a game, it's, like, shut, on the shelf, on to the next thing. I am still... Thoroughly enjoying this game. I cannot wait for the DLC. I yeah. cannot wait for the new original story. I can't. We'll wait. do another hour and a half, two yeah. hour thing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, classic yeah. for sure. Um, cool. Definitely one of my favorite games of all time. Cool, Jake. It's a you can play it, and the reason why I give it that I just didn't fall in love with it like I did the other Zelda games. It just got bland for me really quick. Um, that doesn't make the game bad. I'm not saying you're saying the game is bad. The game is fun. The game had cool elements in it. Definitely changed the idea of what open world should look like. But I just... There are certain things I missed from the other Zelda games that I feel like were key elements that made that series so enjoyable that they kind of took away. And if this is the direction that Zelda's going to go, I really hope they bring back some of it. Because I don't think I'll be going with it. Mm. But, again, the game was fun. I put 50 hours into it. I, I gave it a fair shot. So I'm not saying anything like, hey, I didn't like not play it. I played through it. I did a good amount of the shrines. I did a lot of stuff about it. Um, I just don't think this game is going to be as memorable as Twilight Princess was or Ocarina of Time for me. Gotcha. Yeah. I So for me, I, I have always kind of known what I would give the game. Um, but I did go through some self-doubt uh, about you know 60 hours into the game. Certain issues I was having with it uh, really rose to the forefront of my mind. Um, but the more I kept playing it, the more I realized this kind of a game only comes around every once in a while. Um, and when I think about other games I consider to be classics, um, for me personally, like game like Demon Souls or you know various other games that I love and I think they're classics, they forged a path and they weren't perfect, but they were absolutely distilled and razor sharp at what they were trying to do. Mm-hmm. And they made a difference in the industry. Um, and when I think about this game, it is that. It is not perfect. Um, I, like I said, the enemy variety thing in particular is the main thing that just really kind of bothered me as I kept playing. But that's so minuscule compared to all that there is discoverable. And this game is razor sharp in its aim to redefine how you discover an open world. So that coupled with, I just think that this is the perfect distillation of like everything good that's happening in games like the creativity of Minecraft, the uh, um, comeback of immersive Sims. Metal Gear like, Solid 5. Yeah, the Metal Gear Solid, you know, 5 yeah. approach to game. And then like this like non-linear storytelling and hands off with the player. Yeah. All of these things that like I like in different games just like came in the most unexpected place yeah. of all. They a took series, the best of everything. A yeah. series that I have not touched yeah. in over a decade and they brought it here, and it's past. Um, it, it's right there with Ocarina of Time. It won't pass it, and Ocarina of Time's not better than it. But it's, it's. I never thought that would happen. But for me, for Zelda, there are two sides of the same coin. It accomplishes and, the same. Yeah. Thing so to me, it is. It. It's a. It's a classic. It's. It's confirmed in just how impactful it is. Yeah, so. Definitely. Hmm. Where, where would you kind of rank it on your yeah. other Zelda games? Because I, best wise, I think. 
this is it. <laughs> I yeah. think I think personally this is the best design one. Music, oh my gosh, like across the board, I think it takes everything out. I fight when it comes to favorite. Favorite doesn't mean like my favorite. I feel like is the best Zelda, but yeah. my I think I'm still battling with myself. I think my favorite is still Majora's Mask. Because Majora's Mask had this loopy world, this weirdness about Dark. it, this uneasiness that's like I've never experienced since, mm. you know, in a game to that full extent. So it's like, it's that and Breath of the Wild, maybe Twilight Princess are now kind of in the yeah. top three for me. It's tough because right because I feel like I could start restart playing Ocarina of Time right now, but if you said you want to restart playing Breath of the Wild, I'd be like, ooh, hold on huh. a second. Yeah, this is a it's, different thing. It's, it's, it's like it, a... It, it, it's a different thing. It's an experience. We've, we've talked it's about this with Metal Gear. I would go back and play any of the Metal Gear games again. I'd be hesitant to just restart playing Metal Gear 5. But Metal Gear Solid 5 to me is like, the, it's the evolution. It is, yeah. you know... It, it's it, the pinnacle. Yeah. yeah. Well, the pinnacle for gameplay. Gameplay, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, to me, um, like I said, the two sides of the coin, as far as my favorite being Breath of the Wild and this, or, and Ocarina of Time. Um, other than that, I have never been particularly in love with any of the other Zeldas, even though I like most of them. Yeah. Um, I just feel like most of them iterate on that Ocarina of Time formula. I've never played any of the 2D ones. So the 3D ones iterate on that formula in different ways, and some of them are interesting to different degrees, but uh, this and Ocarina of Time are the top for me. Yeah. Gameplay-wise, this will not be topped. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and like as far as the past games, I'm sure they'll they, yeah. they'll come up with something better. Because I'm what sure people even, said that I just want them to keep adding to this yeah, game. That's don't, what I, don't that's make where a new I'm at one. too. Just keep this adding the, to this, this game the has the same same problem that Mario Super Mario Galaxy was when that came out. Everyone and I was thinking the same thing. Was like wow, it was incredible. Here's the problem. Where yeah. do they go from they like need, perfection? They need to <laughs> they just add, add, treat it perfection. like an MMO. Where like hey, there's a new continent. You know what and I mean. Then, Hey, there's a giant thing just came out. <laughs> I think you and I had Jacob a discussion was, yeah. where basically if they said every year, hey, new $20 you, DLC for this game, you're going to get two packs, yeah. one in the summer, one yeah. in the fall. Use this as a winter. platform to develop. I would take content. it and I would go. <laughs> because they spent so much time in this engine. Jacob's so got much time. Over here. So much time like put developing in some this dungeons world. for you. I, uh, that would be neat, but it's just <laughs> they're like going a, to do it. Hey, there's like you like dungeon. like there's a big island with some dungeons on it. Look, old school dungeons. I'm not. I they just, call an island Mass Effect. Island. I think when they, the the, the, the last good full Zelda game was Twilight Princess. I don't know. It's just something about it, man. The game was. But so... But I feel like, uh, in general, people and me included was like, okay. We've had... The, you already have a Twilight Princess. Yeah. That exists. You already have an Ocarina and of Time. that was kind and of this, already and, and it's like, You can go back and play those any time, but it's yeah. like, it's time for something new, and they absolutely and this is took everything off the, the table and said, okay, let's start again. I just don't think... And here, maybe it's just me. I'm not a guy who goes out and like wants to discover crap. I'm not amazed by that. <laughs> so, you know, toss that to the wayside. Yeah, I want a good game. And I just feel like this game wasn't that. I just, I don't know. It wasn't just, for you. just wasn't for me. See, I gotcha. I just, I loved the exploration because they gave you, the things I love about Zelda, they put them in this world and then said, go find it. And I, I just loved that. I would say gameplay wise, this is my favorite. But story wise, and I know I'm probably the odd man out in the group here, story wise, Skyward Sword. I love the lore. You're not alone. The lore, love the lore and the that. story. Yeah. I, I, and Zelda and Link's relationship and stuff. The the hard thing about this game is there was a disconnect because of Link losing his memory. And I know that's what they yeah. wanted to get across. But I like where they're going with it. Where, mm -hmm. And I hope that the DLC expounds upon the end when she's like, well, we've got to go visit all these other families. I was, I was hoping that like when it got to the end and you defeated Ganon, it would like reveal that she's an old woman. Ooh, I don't know yeah. why. I was hoping for that because... it. To me, it felt a little bit too easy that, oh, she's still young and nothing, it's like nothing. Like, I wanted it to end and she's an old woman and you're young still. Yeah. It's like, wow. They, that was, that wow. was a bit too real. Yeah, because, They weren't wow. ready for that. Yeah. They just had a voice yeah. acting. So, time. Nintendo, if you're listening, yeah, you, you can are. that would have gotten me teared time up. Time matters. Me? Yeah. yeah. Wrapping this up, thank you for watching. This has been our mega review. So, classics across the board, but we have, you know... Maybe I'm, you're, I think you're gonna get doxxed, dude. I'm like not a hater. Else. I'm just a realist. All right, oh, you heard fuck. it. You heard it here first. It Send it your is. hate mail. We're rabid. Hey, we're rabid fans. Real quick, you want to reveal your secret? Oh, do you guys know you can get inside guardians? You can get inside guardians. Do you guys know that? What are you talking about? You can get in a guardian and ride it and control. Okay, so did you guys didn't know you can get in a guardian? 
No. Okay, so if you go, and I forget what the exact materials are, but if you get like a giant ancient core, which you only get a few of them in the game, and a, um, a bunch of other guardian pieces, like screws and stuff you pick up, and you mix them together, you get a guardian key. Mix them together how? Like you cook them. Cook them? Yeah. He's lying. <laughs> this has been confirmed fake. Shut up. <laughs> I just wanted you. Jacob thought. Welcome, or er, uh, thanks for joining us. What? You just got tricked. No. It was a bunch of trolls on YouTube. They did that. I watched like four videos of it. Yeah. Dang it. Oh well, it is what it is. I don't even know what's real anymore. <laughs> no guardian keys. Real. Guardian keys debunked. The master sword. Well, right on. I'm going to pull this sword out and I'm going to. Do you have enough parts? Pull the battery out. <laughs> no. Oh, thank Maybe you. Maybe next time. But thanks you for joining us. See you guys. See, See ya. ya. Is it really fake? Yeah, it's fake. Well, that's <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs>